Uh, uh, indeed, it's a, it's, a great, it's a great honor to be here to, uh, with this, uh, as uh, uh, Charles mentioned, the most intelligent mind in the room, right? It's uh, indeed, as uh, Charles talked about that, uh, in China, up to this moment, there, there are actually, uh, China since 30 years ago, started attracting foreign direct investment into the country. Up to the moment, the, the almost uh, half million of this, uh, we call foreign investment in prices. Um, it's half a million, about over a half are in kind of the uh, joint ventures and some kind of the contract partnership with the local operator, the local firms. Okay. Of course, among this, uh, let's say, 100 to 200,000 uh, ventures, that kind of equity or some kind of non-equity ventures, indeed, as you can see, that definitely there are some successful examples and uh, failed uh, ventures. Okay? It's a very highlight, actually, in my mind, is in the short notice, right? Uh, actually, this also comes from, from alliances. Actually, we, uh, we, myself and uh, Charles, and we work, do some, some joint work, and he'll be in China and at my school, and I've come to this re retrospective visit, right? Uh, actually, the first, uh, it's called U.S.-China joint venture, can you guess which company from U.S. would venture into China to form alliances with the Chinese counterpart? IBM. IBM? No. Cummings? No, not Cummings. Actually, the first joint venture uh, formed between the Sino U.S. joint venture or U.S. China joint venture is formed by a company that already now uh, disappeared, but is now, it's still, his successor is still there. It's an it's American motor company, AMC. That was uh, literally bought up by Chrysler. Right? Of course, Chrysler literally, the Daimler Chrysler, now uh, Chrysler uh, stand uh, alone. That was 1983. The first U.S.-China joint venture is to producing Beijing Jeep in China. That was a very high profile a joint venture, a kind of alliances. That did not, at the very beginning, it did not uh, do well. And uh, literally, both parties trying to manage it, and because uh, the problems back home in the US, and also their problems on Chinese part, and uh, did not do well up to this moment. Okay? Because I think there's a Number of issues when I talk about such ventures, uh, there are three, I think three elements are very important. It's, uh, first of all, is the uh, compatibility of the goal. Right? That's, of course, the theoretic part. And uh, at that time, essentially, actually, from AMC, there were 80s, early 80s, the after the oil shocks in 79, right? That was, a, you see, Jeep at that time was uh, also the gas hungry kind of vehicle. Right? They couldn't, the business didn't do well. They want to venture to a country. Culturally, as also, is very challenging. Right? And they're not prepared well. And they went to that place. Uh, actually, lately, they did not do, do well. But the Chinese also, they have their own uh, Chinese counterpart. They have their own agenda at that time. They wanted to uh, absorb the technology for the modernized uh, the auto industry and actually it's outside alliances. Both parties they have their agenda uh, besides to form alliances to make the joint venture work well. So at the very beginning, so that's why they called compatibility of the goal at the beginning was not set right. Okay? And uh, the source compatibility of the goals are uh, very important. Also at that time we think about uh, in many of these uh, joint ventures, in, in China at least, it's, it's, uh, they have fixed term uh, in their relationship. It's typically 25, 30 years, or 15 years. Okay? And if it's fixed term in collaboration, each part is sometimes not very stable. So that's why it's called but continuity is very important to have uh, this kind of joint venture or alliance to be stable. I think another uh, issue, I would say complementarity. I would consider uh, three Cs. 
uh, com uh, compatibility, complementarity, and the continuity. Right? These are the issues that uh, drive this uh, alliance's work. A better example here, I would call this, is that uh, Motorola. Okay? Uh, Motorola is a very strange, very, very uh, well, not strange, actually Motorola entered into China as a wholly owned subsidiary, operating in China. But after entering into China market, invested in China from, literally realized that Motorola did need a partner. So typically, most of the cases in China, they first enter the new market, foreign market, form a joint venture or alliances. Right? And eventually, the, let's say, US firm in China, they know the market, they know the culture, they turn to be the more flexible, um, they turn into a wholly owned subsidiary. The so Motorola did the reverse. Because bring the technology first form wholly owned subsidiaries, a fully owned subsidiary in Tianjin turned to be very, one of the biggest overseas operations of Motorola. Lately, they discover indeed they need, need local partners, form lines with local partners in marketing and, uh, and other dimensions. They feel that uh, they do need some external complementary skills to do well. This other, uh, so Motorola, I think, is very. Uh, successful in China because actually is one of the technology. I, I'm using a uh, carrying Motorola phone because uh, this is a the Chinese. You see, very interesting is the Chinese inputting method is the best in the world developed in China by Motorola and joint venture engineers. So this is using you know the Chinese characters, right? It's not the alphabetic. So this is a uh, another example for how this. Uh, this, uh, most of the senior executives in China, actually, they use this type of Motorola phones because the convenience in the inputs of Chinese characters. Okay, they could not develop that in Shamber, right? In Illinois, because they, they have to, in the new market, they will use, take local talent from alliances and develop that kind of uh, technology tailor-made to that market. Okay. Yeah, these are the uh, two Examples. I think about if they manage, they can manage that uh, the look in the foreign country, right? They can manage the alliances relationship well, and that to advance, enhance their uh, business in that uh, in the foreign environment, right? And uh, if they did not manage them well, at the, I think that in, lately, actually, there is a. Uh, the outcome may not be satisfactory. That's in that case. That's two cases I've been following closely. I've been, oh, of course, there are tons of other, other cases, right? That's indeed, uh, this we talk, we talk about this. There's one thing why uh, uh, Charles Jameson, there's, uh, I think, the most, the highest number of joint ventures. There's one type of the alliances takes place in China. There are also, there's uh, what we call it, uh, business decisions to form joint ventures. On the other hand, there are also restrictions, right? Because uh, in certain areas, that uh, particularly in the emerging markets or the transition economy or a different kind of economy, they put restrictions, right? And uh, uh, in the early years, the foreign investors must take form of joint venture instead of the wholly owned subsidiary, even today. Right? In certain sectors, for in the banking sectors or insurance, other things, and uh, secure, I mean, uh, securities industry and uh, overseas investors like Citibank, like uh, Merrill Lynch, other things, they only take uh, an equity position instead of a, a wholly owned subsidiary. So in that case, that is a, uh, this is a one, only one way to, it's related to as a, alliances as a way, uh, they call it mode of entry into a new, new market. Uh, actually, there are some very interesting development recently, if you follow some news and uh, some in the international news, because uh, uh, in, in U.S., probably also in China, there are heated debate issue. Let's say uh, in 
in recently, I think the finance, finance industry here in the US uh, does not perform well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but okay, for those companies who invested in, in some Chinese, com Chinese banks, performed well, for instance, Bank of America is one of the examples that we talk about. Actually, their second largest bank in China is called uh, Bank Chinese Construction Bank, CCB. CCB, when it's, because it's a state-owned bank, and when it's trying to try to go to IPO, initial public offerings, and they need uh, some, they want it to have, uh, to show to the international capital market, there's an uh, outside of the China people have faith in it. So he invited the former what were called strategic, strategic investors. Bank of America, uh, among others, was invited to bid, uh, to take the position of strategic invest investor position. Actually, I think at that time, uh, Citibank, uh, Bank of America, and other banks are participating. And it is, in the end, it's a Bank of America uh, won that position. So at that time, it's, it's IPO. I think Bank of America took a position at eight percent of the shares of uh, CCB, China Construction Bank. But they also, in that agreement, be uh, that the Bank of America be that the BOA, right? This BOA? BAC. BAC. Bank of America. Oh, uh, Bank of, oh, B, this is called BAC. BAC. Oh, BAC. BAC had the right to increase its holdings up to 19.9%. But now, now Bank of America wanted to buy more shares in CC, uh, in China's China construction bank at a predetermined RPO price. Then, in domestically in China, there are uproar about it because its price has gone up a lot. Right? And then uh, there's a debate in the media that whether the, the CCP saw the shares on the cheap and uh, uh, Bank of America uh, took advantage of uh, some kind of things. Actually, uh, yesterday on the internet, the main internet, uh, uh, CCB make official announcement of its statement, official statement, say, wait a minute. And actually, uh, Bank of America, after taking the position of strategic investor, investor position, right, sent experts to help the Chinese construction bank to upgrade its uh, branches skills and train staff, bring some technologies and introduce new product to help that the Chinese construction bank to upgrade. Okay, also gave, indeed give the confidence for international investors. You see that why the issue here, these things work the other way around because uh, you know the Bank of America because uh, uh, subprime loans, other things, right? They have some heavy losses, right? In certain sector in, in the US. But the, the investment in CCB actually appreciate a lot. They, they wanted to increase their shares in CCB and that actually the, they can book the profit. Right? The profit would fit better in their balance sheet. You, you tell the story? Yeah. Sure. You are familiar with the case uh, like last week, uh, you know, I mean, the week before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is a, this is kind of the alliances. Okay. In the banking sector also we talk about alliances indeed can uh, help each other, for instance, sometimes selective. You see that the, the largest bank uh, in China is the uh, uh, Industrial Commercial Bank of China, ICBC. You see, ICBC has a very extensive network for commercial banks, but they're weak in invest banking and the credit cards. So when the when ICBC, Industrial Commercial Bank of China, uh, went to IPO, he invited uh, American. Express, American Express, 
and Goodman to be ICBC's strategic investors because essentially they bring in, right, because they're two of the best uh, finance companies right, in the U.S. to be their strategic, strategic investors. Of, I think up to, I think about up to 10 per, 10% or something, right? And in that case, in the future, they have a collaborative relationship, of course, for American Express. And, uh, and for Goodman, they also wanted this relationship and help them to develop businesses in the rapidly developing emerging market. Right? That is uh, what we call it the uh, uh, alliances. Okay, that's it. Of course, uh, this is just a, a, a the, f the linkage in that case, uh, in that there's two examples, later two examples in banking sector uh, linked by uh, fi on the financial front, right, financial front, because it's uh, cross holdings. Right? Well, not cross holdings, it's, uh, it's the invest investment. Right? But of course, that follow that, uh, there will be some uh, the, how to manage that relationship, right? How to, uh, if, when situation changes, okay? And for instance, uh, uh, Bank of America recently made a statement, so we do not, uh, the Bank of America does not want to hold up to 90.9%, right? This uh, shares eventually they want to reduce to a certain level, about 10% level, right? They don't want to be, as a, besides the, the state, as a, the largest uh, shareholder that they will want to be second, they want to reduce their exposure a little bit, right? And uh, that is a, they can manage the relationship. Of course, personally can form a joint team to develop a certain product and uh, they can sell the product through the second relationship. It's also uh, something that the company, these banks, book from, from two continents, right? Trying to help each other. Okay, also this, uh, uh, Okay, for Peru, you already covered this, and uh, uh, Bank of America sold his uh, Hong Kong operation to uh, Chinese construction bank, CCB, because they're trying to avoid the, the conflict, because this is one way to manage the relationship. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure whether there are other uh, yeah. things. Yeah. I, I want to ask uh, yes. some questions, and then Please. I'll go. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 